Good morning everybody, this is Stephen Pugh with the Home Bible College. Today is February the 27th and we're looking today at Mark chapter 11. We have a number of small paragraphs today beginning with verse 1. The first one is the entrance of the Lord Jesus on what we call Palm Sunday. It's very interesting when you look at Mark's account of this, how that he tells two disciples to go into the village, which is nearby, um, and they will find a colt tied by the door um, in, in a place outside where two ways meet. So this is very specific. It would be possible in those days to go back to the exact spot and find the place where there were two ways that meet and find the door and find the cult again and they loose him and they bring him and the people say why are you doing this and they say the master has need of him and so they say that's okay and when they brought the cult to Jesus they cast their garments on him and sat and he sat upon him and many spread their garments in the way and others cut down branches um, of the trees and strewed them in the way and those that went before and those that followed cried saying Hosanna blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and went into the temple and he looked around and inspected everything and it was now coming to be eventide so he went out unto Bethany with the twelve now this is the Sunday afternoon which we would call eventide and the Lord Jesus um, is leaving the city having inspected everything and he um, comes out of the city and goes back to Bethany to sleep then on the Monday we have an incident on the morrow when they were come to Bethany Christ was hungry and saw a fig tree afar off having leaves so he came to it that he might find something thereon but when he came to it he found nothing but leaves uh, the time of figs was not yet now I don't think that this meant that the season for figs hadn't come it meant that this particular tree was unready it was not in season and the figs had not developed and Jesus answered and said unto it no man shall eat of thee hereafter for ever and the disciples heard it um, and then Jesus continues to go into the city but presumably now he goes in there hungry and he does a day's work in the temple clearing it out on the Sunday he'd inspected everything but on the Monday he cleanses the temple and he overturns the tables of the money changers so all the little piles of coins would have tipped over and rolled everywhere and if the Lord Jesus had done that to more than a dozen tables then the money would have been totally mixed up and these men probably would never have sorted out whose coins were whose and not only that they probably never ceased to fall out about whose money belonged to who and he overturned the seats of those that sold doves you see the men used to sit on the basket with the doves underneath enclosed but as the Lord Jesus went down as they stood up to try to save the money he then kicked the basket and uh, the ba the baskets turned over and the doves flew they flew perhaps the doves flew away forever never to return and uh, the Lord Jesus <coughs> he um, made a whip with cords and he cleared out all the animals from the temple and he cleared out all the, um, the the sheep and the goats and the bulls and all the animals that were there for sacrifice it must have been like a quite a dirty cattle market they had turned the holy prince precincts of the temple into a cattle market and a filthy place it would have been too and the Lord Jesus um, <clears throat> stopped people from using the temple as a shortcut from going from one side of the city to the other 
from carrying things through the, through the temple. The temple was to be a place of prayer, not a shortcut. Um, <clears throat> and um, the scribes, and he says, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. A den of thieves. That's quite a sharp uh, allegation. But thieves, you see, are people who steal the money. Okay, they steal the money and they were using their position, this monopoly that they had managed to obtain from the chief priests. No doubt they'd paid a lot of money for the privilege for being there. And they were uh, using this place, this holy place, to be a place of of fraud and a place of um, thieving from people. <clears throat> the people were astonished at his doctrine. Um, and all the people, um, they came and they heard and saw what he did. No doubt he ordered for brooms to be found and buckets of water. And he would have cleaned the place and made it spotless. This was a day's work of cleansing the temple. And when the evening was come, he went out of the city back to Bethany. This is the second time in the Holy Week that the Lord Jesus leaves the city for Bethany. The next time he leaves the city, he will be leaving the city to go to the Mount of Olives. We'll see that on another day. Now in the morning, and this now is the Tuesday morning, verse 20, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter called to remembrance what the Lord Jesus has said. And Christ said to him, have faith in God. For whatsoever you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, then it, you, then it shall be done. Um, <clears throat> Wherefore I say unto you, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against your brother, um, that your Father which is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now, this is not Christian teaching. This is the teaching of the Lord Jesus under the Mosaic law. God is going to deal with men in the old covenant righteously. If they hold a grudge and do not forgive their brother, then the Lord will not forgive them. But if they do forgive their brother, <clears throat> then the Lord will forgive them. Of course, Christians are forgiven completely and forgiven freely. And our salvation, our forgiveness of sins is not based upon whether we forgive our brethren it's based upon the fact that the Lord Jesus died for all our sins upon the cross um, however the Christian having been forgiven of all his sins needs then to learn to forgive his brother his trespasses now on this particular day, this is the Tuesday, and Christ comes into the temple. And as he's walking in the temple, there come to him the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And they say, by what authority do you do these things? Who gave you the authority to do these things? What they mean is, who said that you were allowed to clear out the temple? And Jesus said, well, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and then I will tell you what authority I do these things. He says, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or was it for men? Answer me. And they reason with themselves, saying, if we say that it's from heaven, then he will say, then why did you not believe in him? But if we say that it is of men, then they feared the people, because all men counted John to be a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell, we are not sure whether John was from heaven or from men. Now that's a cop out. They just were not prepared to spit out the words that they didn't believe in him. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Neither do I tell you by what authority I do these things. Now if you go to Israel today, or if you speak to Jews today, this is an important question. The important question is, the baptism of John, 
was it from heaven or was it from men and what the Jews will say today and what the religious leaders of Israel will say today is we're not sure we don't know they will say that the people of the day examined John and examined his teaching and came to the conclusion that he was not <clears throat> the one that was there was the voice crying in the wilderness to prepare the way of the Lord um, and that of course is a denial of John's ministry and of course they will also tell you that the religious leaders of the day examined the Lord Jesus and his deeds and they decided that he also was not the coming Messiah in fact um, one of the, the 13th uh, article in the Jewish statement of faith today is this that the Messiah is still to come so it's a denial it's an outright denial of the fact that the Messiah has come and they crucified him and they did with him whatever they could well my password today my password today is that lovely phrase that comes in verse uh, 9 it says this Hosanna blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord this was the Lord Jesus coming into his city and he was coming on a donkey he was coming as king you see the donkey was the seat of kings he was coming as the Holy One of Israel and the disciples they all gathered around him and they sang his praises how much they understood about what this meant is very difficult to know but they did sing his praises and uh, that's just what we do today well God bless you great to speak to you and look forward to speaking to you tomorrow bye for now